Hello, welcome to episode 6, October 13. Um, I shouldn't say erm at all. I wanted to mention that we uh, joined, entered our feature freeze period, sort of, or bug fixing period in the curl project this Wednesday. We do releases every eight weeks, so we have a four week period first that w when we accept changes or bug um, features. And then we have four weeks of just accepting bug fixes. And we enter this second period now, four weeks of just bug fixes until we do the release, pending on the no on November 5, 7.39.0, supposed to be released then. And then we start over with the allowing features again. So we have a, a couple of features that are now being discussed and worked on on the mailing lists, but they won't, won't be merged until after the release then. Uh, particular we have this SMB protocol and we have a, another patch pending, which is about doing all these, a lot of protocols over the Unix domain sockets instead of actual TCP sockets. So there's some interesting stuff going on. Um, I wanted to mention that I also slowly, I'm converting a lot of these um, text only documents in the curl source tree, basically the Docs folder and some other folders into proper markdown formatted documents. And the point there being that I can then uh, translate them, convert them into proper or nicer looking web pages automatically because I populate a lot of the website uh, by converting documents from the source tree. So making better markdown makes it a better conversion and makes them nicer web pages in the end. So I've been working a bit on that. Oh, actually, over the uh, last couple of weeks or months or so, but I, this last week I took a whole bunch of them and converted them. I also uh, kind of concluded, or for this time at least, I managed to get all the converted reports down to zero. Converts allows uh, us uh, a lot of open source projects to do scans for free for their commercial tool that is a static code analyzer. And it's... It finds a lot of bugs or potential bugs that Clang, the Clang analyzer never finds. So it's a really good addition to also run Coverity on them on the code. And I fixed more than 20 of them uh, basically during the last week or so. So that's good. I, I, I like tools finding out potential problems so I can work on them. <clears throat> and I also posted a... Um, a little article on, on my blog about uh, the internal timers in libcurl. Since since libcurl has the um, my text editor vanished. Uh, since libcurl has the ability to to do a lot of transfers, simultaneous transfer in the same thread, uh, just having a state machine, so you can do basically thousands or tens of thousands of simultaneous transfers. It has a way to handle timers and timeouts so that it, it'll, it won't be a problem to the application. Uh, I've, tried, I've tried to written, uh, write an uh, explanation for how it works, and basically to help other code readers or implementers or anyone who's interested in the internal designs of libcurl how, to figure out how it works or, or what the intention is with a couple of the functions and a couple of the layouts. That's about it about curl for this week, I think. Lots of bugs and lots of discussions, of course, uh, going on. I haven't really made any particular big advances in any of my own development the last week. In Firefox, I kind of got hung up on this bug 1077084, which is a DNS crash that I sort of caused when I uh, merged when my fix merged for, for the network changes. So during a network change, the, the DNS cache is flashed and it wasn't done proper in the proper way. So it kind of raises against another feature that, that makes some TTL checks for DNS on Windows only. So I'm working on, on polishing up a good fix for that because I want that fixed before I land the network changes for Firefox OS and, and Linux proper Linux desktop. So I have, I have a patch for that already pending. I just want this bug properly fixed first. 
And uh, HTTP 2 wise, Twitter, I, I mentioned last week that Twitter uh, broke their servers and, and uh, both Firefox and Chrome couldn't work with Twitter or TweetDeck's uh, websites at all. And Twitter then went back and they don't offer HTTP 2 anymore. They offer Speedy 3.1. I don't know why or when they're going to do speed 2 no, or sorry, it should be 2 again, but I just know this, what, what the protocol header says. Uh, I'm going to have a, a little workshop and, and talk at the Stockholm University DSV this Thursday, just in case you happen to be around. I don't know. I, I think it's closed for, for students at the DSV Stockholm University system but let's copy whatever it is it's gonna be fun about uh, contributing to open source and how to contribute that's it I'm not going to the IETF meeting in Honolulu in November just in case you want to know I'm not gonna be there it's too far away and it's too close to another travel I'm gonna do in, in December anyway so more about that another time that's it for this week, I believe. I'm going to basically continue with the same stuff this coming week, work on this Firefox bug, get it merged, get my next, get this feature in. And in curl, I'm gonna work on a lot of bug fixes. Hopefully get to some HTTP2 testing soon, but I don't think I'll do that this week. We'll see. See you in another week then. Bye.